Our album, uh, Music for Christmas, contains uh, tracks that uh, were recorded uh, over a three-year time period. Uh, Starting in 1976, December of 1976, uh, these recordings were made uh, during uh, Christmas concerts uh, performed by uh, Jim Welch, uh, the organist. Um, He... um, uh, All but one of the tracks were recorded at Stanford Memorial Church in Palo Alto, California. The instrument in that church is uh, was originally built in uh, 1901 by the Murray Harris Organ Company, and then it was uh, updated several times over the years um, uh, until 1933, when it received a f- you know final modifications by the Aeolian Skinner Company. Uh, the instrument is. Um, it's located in a loft, an organ loft, nothing strange about that. But what is rather unique about this is that the organ loft at Stanford Memorial Church allows seating for, if, if I recall correctly, about 50 people. Uh, and during these concerts, uh, I noticed that people would love to come up here, up, up there and, and uh, uh, sit and uh, observe uh, Jim Welch playing the instrument and to partake of the um, all-consuming sound of the pipe organ uh, uh, up that close. Uh, The pipe organ itself is not a huge instrument, uh, 3,355 pipes. Uh, It is um, voiced in such a way that it has uh, a tremendous uh, low-frequency capability, uh, but not a lot of energy above uh, three or four kilohertz. Uh, the um, microphones that I used uh, during uh, during uh, these three years were the AKG 414s and um, those uh, those microphones uh, I'm very fond of the 414s they always would give a very alive sound. Now these recordings were not intended originally to be used uh, in in a commercial uh, product, uh, they were recorded during these concerts, uh, and the album was actually originally put together so that uh, Jim would have uh, albums to give to friends and so forth, and perhaps sell at the the concerts. Um, but it it really um, kind of catalogs a history of the development of recorded sound in in as I was learning the art. So in 1976 in the first uh, uh, the first part of this uh, which constitutes the first eight tracks uh, I used uh, the 414 microphones uh, and I used uh, a, a commercial grade uh, recording tape called Maxell UD and uh, the rest of the tracks were recorded in uh, 1977 or 78, and I used a, a 3M250 studio mastering tape. So it's very interesting to compare the sound between uh, the, the first eight tracks and then the last uh, tracks. Um, the studio mastering tape is uh, quite a bit cleaner, lower noise. Uh, the microphones are the same, the recorder's the same. Uh, so you get to hear the effect of that one variable. Uh, there, generally, I was using a spaced omni uh, configuration. Uh, one of the tracks uh, uh, is of uh, a composition uh, composed by Jim Welch and sung by my wife Cheryl. Uh, I think it's the only uh, recording of her voice that we've ever put on a, a record for sale. And I think she did an outstanding uh, job singing that. Uh, and that that uh, uh, that track was recorded. Uh, that is the one track that was not recorded at Stanford Memorial Church. That was recorded at All Saints Episcopal Church in Palo Alto. That's home of an exquisite uh, Flintrop uh, pipe organ. Um, <laughs> This is a. This turns out to be a rather fun recording in a number of ways. 
Uh, if you want to impress people with your subwoofers, just put on the uh, 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 Divinium uh, Mysterium by Richard Purvis uh, and uh, turn it up and hang on and uh, tighten your seat belts because it really has the low frequency output. Uh, the um, there are a lot of uh, there's some splices in it. There's uh, a lot of audience sound. It's is basically what you would hear if you were up in that organ loft as as I was because I I would sat I would sit there right amidst the audience with my tape recorder <laughs> recording this thing. So it picks up everything. So uh, it's a it's a recording that uh, that you may just uh, really enjoy. <laughs> 